We are live on Yonkers Voice, and today our guest is Shanae Williams, Councilwoman Shanae Williams. Shanae, thank you for taking the time, even though you're not feeling very well today. Right. But you was a true champion. You came out no matter what to talk to us, to make yourself available. Happy to be here, bro. Hello, good morning, everyone. And how do you feel? Aside from being a little under the weather, I'm good. Thank you're you. good? Yes. But what are you feeling? With a flu, sick, fever? I think it might be just uh, maybe allergies or a cold, allergy, but yeah. yeah. A lot of that going on. Shania, there is lots of stuff that uh, we need to... Uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to just move because you're going to the train. There is a few things that we need to speak about. People want to know. People want to know about the uh, housing. People want to know about crime in Yonkers. People want to know about, uh, as they call it, a dysfunctional council that we have today. I don't know if that's a perception, if it's a rumor, or if there is any truth to that. Mm -hmm. We want to know, we want to know about that. Uh, and we want to know about your progress, the things that uh, you have done, that you have promised, the things that you have been able to accomplish, the challenges that you have, if you are having any, and to accomplish those things. It's just a, an interview to hold, better for, uh, uh, lack of a better term, to hold you guys up to the promises that you make and understand why certain promises are not being able to be fulfilled. Because we all know that uh, during campaign, promises are made. But those promises cannot be fulfilled based on one person only. There is a body, there is votes, there is a whole bunch of things, and there is certain, certain things that even though you want to accomplish, but when I say you, I mean the council person, you're not able to because there is others. Mm -hmm. So tell us about what is on top of your agenda. Well, Drew, you know, about five years ago when I, um began this, uh, this journey and decided to represent the people of Yonkers and they, um, you know, not only voted for me to represent them, but I wanted to do everything I can to be that advocate for the people of the first district. Um, at the top of my list was, of course, you know, doing everything I can to get more affordable housing for the people of Yonkers, um, focusing on education, making sure that our children are getting the best quality education that we can provide. Um, with the with what we have, um, fighting for you know just to improve the quality of life, especially um, in the first district where you know there's been a number of issues and struggles. Um, those sort of things, and, and I've been making sure that there's you know that we we, we invest in our parks, invest in our community, build up the downtown. Those are things that have always been important, and they're still on very much at the top of the agenda, and we're constantly working on those things. Um, as a, a, as a body and as a city, and I think you know there has been a lot of progress. Um, I meet new people all the time in my district. Where I go down to the waterfront, and they just love it. They love to see the development. They love to see you know the, the events and the things that's going on through the downtown there. Um, do they have concerns? Absolutely. The homeless crisis is still very much an issue, and we've done a lot of different initiatives with a lot of different partners. And there has been some progress, but there's still so much more to do. And that's why I'm so happy that I have this opportunity to continue to fight for the people and do what's necessary. No, Shane, before we go further, let me make a disclaimer and mm -hmm. apologize if need to be. But I think you know perfectly well, and I don't think I need to apologize to you. But I need to make it clear to the people who are watching. Sometimes I get a comment. Why are you so disrespectful to your, uh, to your host, to your guests? Mm -hmm. Why you keep talking while they, uh, I mean, uh, King, why are they talking? Well, guys, the reason I do that is because I'm watching the interview as you guys are watching, and there is people asking questions. So I'm reading the comments so I can ask the councilwoman, so I don't want to look disrespectful to you in any way, and neither want to be disrespectful to you guys. So now you know. Homes, housing, affordability, it's much more complex than me. Absolutely. Okay. Now, there is a new word. No, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. Housing is a fundamental human right. You know, uh, making sure that people have uh, a, a place to sleep is definitely, it, it shouldn't be complicated. It should be very straightforward. But we know that there's always funding involved. We know that there's mental health issues involved. We know that there's a 
of authority issues that we have to get around, and so it does become more complex than it should be. But I agree with you. Uh, I'm getting a message saying that our audio, audio is horrible. Oh, uh, Maybe it's because you have your... I'll, I'll speak louder. Speak louder, yes. Yeah. Speak louder. Uh, I'll try to speak louder. And yeah, but it speak. gets muffled. Okay. I apologize, guys, but the, the councilwoman is not feeling well, so she feels that she needs to have the mask. But she's going to speak a little louder, hoping that you guys can hear. Well, in theory, it's not a complex. But in practice, it is. Because, like you said, there's budgets, there is votes, there is a, a whole bunch of things. Affordability is a relative term. What's a rel affordable to some is not affordable to others. Okay, and so it's more complex than it is. Yeah, it's not that simple to put in practice. Now, we have a new ordinance, correct? We have a proposal from. A proposal. We have a proposal from the mayor. Um, which he said he would propose last year, but after vetoing the ordinance that I had introduced. Um, so we're, we, it was um, officially submitted to us in May, towards the end of the month, and we had our first real estate meeting on it a couple weeks ago. Um, and you know, if you missed that meeting, I'm happy to talk about some of the things that's, that's in there, because I do think that it is important. Um, there's a lot of good, uh, good proposed items in there, but there's also some concerns for me and so I think we're at a process where we're trying to work through that. I think we're having another uh, real estate meeting tonight, if I'm not mistaken, at 4.30. So we're gonna continue to have the conversation and tighten it up and make it as good as we possibly can before bringing it to a vote. How different is this ordinance from the prior ordinance? Well, the major difference is the, the, the percentage that's set aside for affordable housing, right? We know that I was fighting for 20%. Um, this is not what's proposed here. Um, there's an option between uh, 13 or 10% for developers to choose um, how much they want to set aside. Um, if they have, if they're planning to build more than 20 units. So if you're building some, uh, an apartment building that's only 18 or 10, 10 units, you don't have to comply with this ordinance. But if it's, uh, if it's more than 20 apartments, then you have to pick between 13% or 10%. And in that, if you choose the 10%, then 100% of those units, um, of, of the 10% that you choose, will have to be 65% or more of the AMI, of the area unit income. And if you choose the 13%, then there's a breakdown between 40% of the AMI being 65 or below, 40% being 65.1 to 80%, and 20%, sorry, 40, 40, and then 20% being 80.1 80. to 100% of the AMI. Um, and I think those are things that we want to work on. I think we should, you know, if for me it's a problem to just say, you know, 40% will go to 65, those who fall in between the 65 or below AMI, when that doesn't say anything. If, if I'm applying and I'm at the, at the 45% of the AMI, I don't know if I'm gonna be guaranteed a fair opportunity to get that apartment because the developers might say, everybody that's applying that's at the 65% is who we're gonna go with. We're not gonna actually go below the 65, right? We're not gonna look at people who are making, you know, 50% of the AMI. We're, we'd rather get as much money as we can with the higher income level. And so we have to tighten that up and, and be, just be very intentional about the percentage. Um, and not give, leave it so open-ended. And I think you know that's something that we're discussing um, and we have to figure out what that number is. Now, you and the other uh, council council members are seeing this uh, new proposal I try. There is any friction, challenges, disagreement? And uh, if there is, can you elaborate on what those uh, disagreements, frictions might be? Are you, are you referring to the affordable housing? Yes. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know. I can't speak for my colleagues. I, since this was introduced, I really um, haven't heard from my colleagues on what they're thinking. I know, other than what they said in the meeting, um, I so know. Let's go by that. Right. Let's I, go by what I they have said. Exactly. I, I can't. I, I'm not. I don't have the best memory, so I can't really say exactly what everyone wanted. But I know that um, I don't think the majority leader had any comments at, at all. Um, 
I know the council president had some concerns and I think we were aligned in a lot of them um, when it comes to the, the affordable housing trust fund committee to making sure and same with um, uh, uh, Councilman Pineda Isaac, I know she wanted some changes as well to make sure there's one section that spoke about the planning board having full control over whether or not they get to decide if they want to um, have a developer not comply with the housing ordinance at all and do a 100% buyout. She doesn't think that that should be totally up to the planning board, it should be a decision by the council. I agree with that. Um, you know, there's a, a few things in there when it comes to. Um, but like I said, we we'll talk about the AMI. Um, we all, I think, for the most part, we're all in agreement. Uh, Councilman Pineda Isaac and Council President Rakesha Pons Elmi, that we need to tighten that up. Um, there's certain, certainly, I'm concerned about the uh, the fee in lieu of payments. So what is said in the fee in, in lieu of payments is that. Uh, there's a set number for what each apartment is worth, whether it's a studio or a two bedroom or a three bedroom. And I think that we'll be doing the city of Yonkers a disservice by not putting a percentage of what those apartments are worth, by in, and instead by putting you know, $90,000 for each studio. We know that over time, inflation happens, cost of living goes up. A one bedroom is not going to be worth $130,000 10 years from now, which is what this ordinance says it's worth today, right? So we have to, I think we have to really fix that so that it's fair um, and that will, you know, this ordinance will be sustainable. And I think that's something that I'm, I'm personally concerned about. I think that some of my colleagues certainly agree with me on that. Um, as far as, um, you know, I think overall though, I think that we're all happy to see um, some positive changes in there. Like there's set asides for developers who want to build 100% affordable housing. Before, in the current ordinance, there isn't a set-aside for that. And I think um, that was something that we had introduced in the proposal that I had in the last ordinance last year. And so some of that was, um, in turn, placed in this ordinance, which I appreciate. And I think it's a good um, thing to have that kind of foresight and to work with developers who are trying to build 100% affordable housing. There's also, um, there's also set-asides for, um, that speaks to what the, the, um, the tenants have to pay in relation to fees, which is not something that's currently in the ordinance, and we've seen some issues in my district when it comes to the affordable housing set aside, where the tenants have to pay so much in fees that they can't afford the affordable housing apartment because it wasn't um, specified in the city's ordinance, so, the, develop so the, 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 the landlords were just doing whatever they wanted. And so that was an issue, and so now we're addressing that. So I think there's some good things in there. Um, so, Shanae, as you know, this is live. People are engaged yeah. and people are asking questions. We have a statement and a question okay. for my friend Drew Peterson. Drew, nice to see you. I'm glad you're okay. Drew says this. We, we all know the percentages. Mm -hmm. We need to know when there can be more affordable housing. That's what people need to know, according to, to, uh, to Drew. Well, we can't give a set date and say tomorrow we're going to have 10 new affordable housing Time for go the up. next two we years, four that. years, four you years. Know, we have to get the, we, there's a process. We have to get the legislation passed first through. And then as developers come in and they, they, they understand the ordinance, then we can move forward with that process. You know, you know, there's a whole slew of things that they have to do before they can get shovel ready. So we, it, that's really an impossible um, question for me to answer, um, but we hope to see you know, within the next decade, more housing for people in Yonkers, more affordable housing. Well, look, we're talking about housing, but at the same time, we are hurting people of Yonkers, long residents of people of Yonkers. We all heard about Lionsgate. Lionsgate is coming to town, is bringing tons of jobs, but because of Lionsgate, in the area of your district, Warburton Avenue, Lots of people are, will also lose their homes. In that block by the church, Warburton up to Ashburton Avenue, mm -hmm. a lot of property has been bought by Lionsgate. None of them have been housing that's been bought. At the corner, at the corner, including top class limousine, have been bought. That's a business that was. Yes. It's a business, but below, before, that is housing right there. To my knowledge, I don't know about any of those housing 
people being pushed out of those housing. I mean, that, I, that I cannot speak to because I haven't seen that. Okay, but and the have, lots, the empty lots that say that they are in process of purchasing, they're vacant lot or one of them. But, right. it, but you know, very often things start in one way mm -hmm. and they turn into something else. I know that you cannot see the, force in the future, that you cannot talk about things that didn't happen yet. But often we have plans. Mm -hmm. If this happened, mm -hmm. how are we going to react? They are moving in. They're going to be buildings there to accommodate people that are coming to work in those studios. How are you thinking about addressing? What do you mean there are going to be buildings there to accommodate the students? There are going to be studios there and parking. There's not going to be. What do you mean buildings? Well, housing. There's to live for people. Have to yes. Live the That's housing. a misconception. I I haven't heard that at all. There's they're building studios. They're not building residential housing. Um, for their staff, is okay, that so the thing? Okay, so top class <laughs> limousine yeah. is being bought probably for a studio. Between, for the parking, yeah. Okay, between top class limousine mm -hmm. and Warburton Avenue is residential. Have you talk, talked about the disruption that that might cause to the other residents in that area? Have I talked about or thought yeah, have about you talked about? Have you spoken about, do you know anything, have you considered? Have you done studies? In, in I, uh, so the city council, um, we have not done any studies in regarding to that. Now, the, the process, of this, as we talk about the process again, is when someone wants to do something in the city of Yonkers, and whatever the zoning is for that area, if it's residential, or if it's a you know, DMX zone, or whatever the zone is, and they want to, if, if it doesn't require what they want to do, they have to go through the, the process of doing zone change. So they have to go before the planning board and the zoning board and get approvals, and those boards bring the, the, the issues to us on the city council to approve or disapprove. Now, none of that has happened with any of these, uh, uh, none of that has come before the city council as of yet. So I can't, so, and when, when, if and when it does, if they are looking to do a zone change, which I don't think that they are, if, they, if that comes before the city council, we, by law, have to have public hearings on those issues. And when we do, I make it a point to put the information out there. I want to see the community come out and engage and give their two cents, because that is how the process works. Um, we haven't gotten to that point. So guys, you heard something extremely important from the council. Well, actually, two things. There is no plans to make that property between, uh, I don't know what the name of the street. Ashburn and, Ashburn and, and Wells. Well, Wells as a residential area, that's for studios, as of right now. I have, yeah, that's for studios, that's what's, the, that, that's, what's before, that's what's currently before the planning board that I'm aware of. Now, the other thing is, get involved. If things change, it will come up to the board for discussion, to the council. Right. Get involved, don't just sit back, come over, voice your opinion, talk to your council person, come to the meetings and speak. Don't just sit back there on Facebook. Or you can stay on Facebook and watch the meetings and then communicate um, after via email or however you choose if you don't want to come out in person. That we have our meetings, our, all of our meetings are live on Facebook every week. Whether it's a committee meeting or it's a, 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 really, a, a rules meeting or a city council meeting. Carol, Carol Coughlin, this is what she says. I know Councilwoman Chanel Williams is very supportive of people with disabilities, but I was wondering if there is any mention of set aside in the new in the housing ordinance for people with disabilities. I appreciate all you are doing with the other council members to ensure accessibility. Right. So there's no there's no set aside um, in this uh, proposal, but it is something that was brought up in our last meeting to you know give preferential. Uh, um, housing to those with disabilities and to uh, our veterans. Um, so that is something that was discussed that I think um, all of the council, to my knowledge, are in agreement that we need to um, make sure that there's language in there to support that. Now, homeless is an issue. Mm -hmm. uh, we go around Gary Square mm -hmm. and uh, we see the homeless there. But uh, I was told, actually, I was taken to St. Cashman, 10 St. Cashman. Mm -hmm. And I saw the new building, that's 10 St. Cash. Mm -hmm. Not a new building, but uh, the renovation, the the renovation new facilities for the homes. Can you tell us about that? Because I found that very interesting. It's, just, it's not just housing mm -hmm. 
there is a lot of supportive groups built in within that housing. Yes. Tell so us that, about that. That's a long time coming since um, years now when they shut down, or not shut down, but when they, the St. John's Church in Getty Square decided not to renew the lease for um, the housing that was held there, the men's shelter, the, the county and the city worked together to find a new um, workaround and the owner of Ten St. Cashmere uh, agreed to develop his, his property into housing for the homeless and also the county had a con has a contract with the YWCA of Yonkers to make sure that they're providing services, day programs, all the things that we've been advocating for for years into that facility right there so that the homeless, those without homes don't have to go, you know, far and wide to find the services that they need to help them, whether it's to, to, to prepare them for a job, whether it's to get them um, counseling, whether it's to get, you know, just programs for th their mental health, whatever it is, it's all going to be there in one, like a one-stop shop situation, which is similar to what's currently happening at the YWCA for the women. Now this space will be for the men. And, and so it's, um, it's been difficult. I'm sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt. It's going to be for the men. For, for, for what I heard, there is also parts of St. Cashmere that is for families. Because I visited the... If that's a new change, I'm not privy to it. But to my knowledge, it was to replace the men's shelter that was uh, closed down. The only family shelter that the county has, it, um, to my knowledge, is in White Plains and other communities throughout Westchester. There's none in Yonkers. There was never a family shelter in Yonkers for families. Okay, so guys... So if that's changed, I can check on that. And Please, because I, also, I don't think so. I could have understood wrong, mm -hmm. but I thought that they're going to have, actually they have uh, apartments, I think, I don't know if it's six, seven, or eight, yes, four. Yes, apartments, for, yes. Okay, huge apartments, mm -hmm. and I, I believe that was for family. And I believe that uh, they told me that females also will be having a wing there, of course, not yeah. mixed. Yeah, um, I'm not aware of that. That's something. If that's new, I will find out and I will let you know. But and I can check with the council member of the district. That's um, you know, a lot of people think that it's my district because I'm so vocal about the homeless and I talk about it a lot. But it's it's that's take a uh, of the district. Well, I understand that, and I understand that. So she might be more privy to it, especially being that she works in the county. But I that's not a new that's not something that I'm aware of. Yeah, but uh, but regardless. Of you being a, a councilwoman woman for a particular issue, mm -hmm. you're still a young guy. Yes. And this affects all of us. Yes. And I thank exactly. you for taking interest on that because it's something that affects everyone, regardless of where you live right. in Yonkers. Right. But my point is to say that I've always been someone that's been very vocal about helping the homeless and providing more services and you know whatever we can do. So it's something that I've been following, but I don't always get the the calls and updates. When you're in a certain district, they, the person of that district will be more um, aware, will be more aware, aware of uh, right. changes, updates, right. and whatever. Exactly. Word out there, Shane, is that uh, we have a dysfunctional council body this time around. I do remember, because I was there, when uh, Councilwoman uh, Tasha Diaz was elected in charge of it. I remember mm -hmm. your statement. I remember Corazon's statement. Actually, we have it on mm -hmm. film. Uh, and now we see how things are developing. And uh, the talk on the street is we have a council that uh, are more interested in bickering against each other than actually work for the things that we, we were elected mm -hmm. for, which is to serve the people. And when the council doesn't have top priority to serve the people, those who are going to suffer are the people. Mm -hmm. Now, we spoke off camera, and you said, no, that's not you. Are you rushing? No, I'm getting messages. There's a lot going on. <laughs> OK. I know that we spoke earlier, and you said, no, you work at the professional level. That, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, we all have personalities, mm -hmm. and we don't all mix and match with everybody. But your priority is to work for the people. Exactly. Regardless if you like, like A person, B person, you might not go at the end of the day for beer, but that's not going to get involved in you doing the work for the people that you were elected to work for. Exactly. But is this totally rumor? You guys are all 
Um, I'm not sure. So, each other? so you, you referring to um, January 1st or 2nd, whenever we um, had our first um, rules committee meeting, there's always been disagreement for generations on the city council. Um, years and years ago, you know, before I was even on the council, Councilman Pineda Isaac voted against Michael Sabatino to be the majority leader. But after that vote, what happens? They work together, they, they do what they have to do. There's respect and, and, and you do your job. That's the end of it. In the same way, this year, I voted against Tasha Diaz to be majority leader. But that doesn't mean that I can't work with her. That doesn't mean that I don't want to get stuff done. We move on. So whatever friction there is, that if there is friction, I'm not aware of the issues regarding me and anyone else on the council. Um, I think that, you know, I've heard the rumors, um, but I don't listen to rumors. Um, you know, I, I've heard all kinds of stories about that. I, I've never said, never done, so I don't really know um, how to address something that's a rumor. I just ignore it, because rumors are spread by, by fools, and they're believed by fools, in my opinion. Um, I think that, for me personally, like I told you, I'm a professional before anything else. I was given a job to do, and that is to you know, focus on the budget, focus on the legislation, focus on the community, making sure that you know I'm doing my job here at City Hall. It's not about anything else for me personally. So is it fair so to clear up the rumors, as you said, rumors are believed by fools, but there is another saying that uh, perception becomes reality. Yeah. So if the people perceive that there is a problem with the council and the work is not being done. So the trust for the council and council members. Well, let's break that down. Let's break what it work down. is not being done? Did well, we not all the, this year we had a great year. We had a really good budget. There was no talks of layoffs. There were no talks of anything negative with the budget. We worked on it. We got a lot done. We put more money in the budget for education than ever before, which is something that I'm very proud of. Um, because, like I said, one of my main goals is to focus on getting uh, the best services for our kids. We have more counselors that we put money in the budget for. We have more security guards. We know that you know gun violence has been through the roof, and we want to address that and be proactive in protecting our students rather than waiting for something to happen, right? So we've been doing so much. I I, I don't see I, I don't know what dysfunction when it comes to the city council not doing its job because I remember Ruth, our number one job is to balance that budget. And we did that even before the deadline of June 1st, right? And we stayed within the property tax gap. A lot of positive things came out of that. Um, we're hiring more police. We're hiring more firefighters. We're hiring more uh, people in our parks and DPW to keep our city clean and to make sure that it's functioning as it should. That's what's important. Um, and I think that we've been doing a good job at that. So to clear the air, you guys heard from the councilwoman, there is no friction, right? Right. You not, not on my part. <laughs> I You're speaking for exactly. <laughs> I can only speak for myself. As far as Councilwoman Shania Williams, there is no friction with any other member. She's supportive. Yes. They might have disagreements. That's normal. That's, I mean, I have disagreements with my sister. <laughs> so much to me that I'm not going to be family and hers together. Said, sometimes I disagree with my parents, my <laughs> wife. That don't mean I don't yeah. love her. And you know what? There's a stigma about the city council in general for years that it's always been a dysfunctional city council in Yonkers. And I would love to, you know, for us to just kind of do away with that because at the end of the day, we have one job and that is to serve you, the people of Yonkers. You come first before anything else. And so, you know, if, if you have an issue, reach out to your council person. If you think that, you know, there's friction between council members, I don't know, you know, you have to... Talk to your council person and see what whatever you're picking up, whatever your perception is, and clear the air. But really and truly, I think for the most part, there's always going to be personality differences. But that doesn't mean that we can't do our job and we haven't been doing our job because we have. Well, we're looking at the, the, the council today versus the council of yesterday and the year before. And we've seen serious changes. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen that people are now being more accountable for their time. Because you guys get paid for tax by the taxpayers. So, and there's people that think that time was not being accountable. And uh, at least when it comes to my sources, they're telling me there is a new system here now. You have to put your card on by the door when you come in. So that tells us when you're in and when you're out. 
uh, now the, the the council aides or uh, mm -hmm. you know have their own office. So things are changing here. Now, are those change, do you support those changes, Shane? Are those changes for the best now that I can hold people accountable? I know where you are, I know where you're supposed to be. There is no more, oh, I'm out on a comp time and there is no accountability for how much comp time you have. Do you have anything to say on regards to that? Um, I, well, I think that the people of Yonkers should understand one thing. Every elected member of the city council gets to choose who they want to hire to work for them. We have one staff. Everybody knows my staff is Deanna Robinson. Um, you know, John Google has his staff, Corbison has Leslie, so on and so forth. Um, the minority majority leader has two. And, and now the majority whip also has two. The, we are, the, the way that city council works is different from the way the mayor's office or the administration works. We don't um, have a set nine to five because the city council is a part-time job for us. Our staff is full-time, but because we work at odd hours, like if I'm working um, on, a, on a Tuesday from nine to five, but then I know that I, I have council meetings at, after six, from 6.30 to could be going until eight, nine o'clock, and I want my staff for that council meeting, she doesn't need to come in at nine o'clock, right? She, she can come in later in the day because she's gonna be working three, four hours at night. That's how comp time works. That has always been in place. So on the weekends, if there's events and I want my staff to work an event on the weekend, those two hours at that event that she's with me, she can put towards her hours to make up that 40 hours of the week. That's how comp time works. And that has always been in place. It is not something that will ever change. Um, so there's always been accountability. We, we track that information. And we, the, each person reports to their council person what they're doing because at the end of the day, I'm telling Diana to go do X, Y, and Z for me, right? So she'll send me her hours and what, you know, you keep track of this, this Excel spreadsheet. It, and I think every council person staff does that. That hasn't changed. So there's always been that accountability. As far as even the key fob to get into City Hall, the mayor implemented that years ago after, you know, 9-11, that was something that one of, well, was one of the top priority to make sure that there's security at all of our facilities throughout the city. The key fob thing is not new. Um, so, so, you know, it's one, one thing that is new is that you have to use it on every entrance into the city council offices before we would have the door open before COVID. We would have the door open because people will come in and out all the time. Now, you can't, some people don't want you to come to their office without an appointment. You can't just get into security and just go up and see your council person, which I'm hoping that will change soon and go back to that because I, I think this is the people's house. You know, you're welcome here anytime. You should be able to absolutely walk in and knock on the door of your council person and get a meeting. The doors should not be locked. So that's how I feel about that in particular. I understand the need to, to have those key fobs. We have the security downstairs coming into City Hall. We know the, the officers at the front desk what we need to do is reopen City Hall at some point so that the people can walk in and feel comfortable knocking on that front door to come into our offices. What's coming up, Shane? Uh, meaning future plans. Uh, what are the things we know the housing is a top priority for you and is not a top priority for you now, it's always been, because right. we have spoken about this many times through the years, yeah. but what else? So one of my things, you know this better than anyone because you follow me online. You know that I love hiking, I love being in nature. Yes, and I'm I envy you. <laughs> I'm a big outdoors person. Um, oh, hold on, hold on, don't go far. Guys, <laughs> talk about out, you know, outdoor hiking, nature. Stay tuned. We're interviewing a great person right next to this one who's going to give us some uh, hints about places to go, things that he's been doing. So stay tuned for uh, the interview that is coming right afterwards, maybe within the hour. Okay, um, I'll tune in for that if I can, if I can, um, or I'll watch it later. But basically, we know that with all of uh, you know the, the, the things that we're seeing through climate change, we know that Yonkers, and particularly South Yonkers and West Yonkers, there's a lot of hot spots. There's you know the heat is going to continue to get crazy. There's a lot of asphalt. There's not enough greenery in our communities. One of my um, big focus now is to work with the city, work with the administration, work with the parks department to plant more trees, to do what we can to address climate change, to put the funding in there so the professionals can go out and do what's necessary, right? 
Um, I, I want to take the park parks. We've been working on um, some of the parks in my district, um, which I'm very happy about, but I think that there's just so much more we can do. JFK Marina, for example, it's basically all asphalt. We need more trees there. So let's plant more trees. Let's, let's give the people the shading that they need because there's going to come a time where they can't just stay in their apartments all day long and, and run the electricity of the roof with AC. We need more green spaces for our youth. It's better for our health. Um, and, and you know, there's just so many initiatives that we have that we work with the YMCA and with Sisters Sister International and, and, and so many different groups. You know, there's groups that's walking seniors that are doing yonkers on the move. They walk every day to be active. We need to focus on our health, not just our physical health, but our mental health as well. The pandemic, if anything, showed us that. So I think for me, I'd like to take a holistic approach and work with the, the partners out there, the nonprofits and, and the community people to really address that. In fact, grew in a, about a week or so, I think you and I are gonna sit down and talk with- um, That's Lydia. correct, mental health. Mental right. health, it's very important that that is something that Councilwoman also takes to heart. Mm -hmm. Because we need more than just words about mental health. Well, about anything. We need Action. actions, mm -hmm. not words. Right. Okay. We got enough words, you know, to go around for the next 100 years. What we need is actions. Right. And uh, this is something that we were supposed to have done uh, a few days ago, I think last Thursday, but we had some technical problems mm -hmm. that did not allow us to go live, but we're going on next week. I believe mean, next week or this week? I, I, I think it's next week. Yeah, I have to look at the schedule. Yeah. And it's mental health. We want you guys to participate. Mental health is a stealth disease that sometimes we don't see it, but it's there. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we don't know how to address it. Mm -hmm. So we need to create awareness about that mm -hmm. and see how can we address it. It's a serious problem. Right. It's a right. serious problem. Crime, Shane. Crime. Yeah. I see, we see young kids, you know, uh, with guns, mass murder, mass shootings, mm -hmm. mass this, mass that. But the reality is, in America, we have mass shootings every single day. It's too often. It's too often. You know, when you look at other countries who haven't had a, a mass shootings like we have, and they're seeing what's happening here, and they say, oh man, we have to get rid of the guns because we don't want that to happen. And they just completely, just, just completely eradicate guns from their communities. It's completely illegal in, in some countries now to, to have a gun. I know that in America we have the Second Amendment. I understand that, but I think that's something that we really need to um, to, to have a real car real conversation about. Um, it's not just about the illegal guns on the street. It's not just about the mass murderers. It's all of it. It's all of it. There's no separation when it comes to gun violence, you know. And I think that's the subject that I think has to come from the top. Um, we know that Congress, you know, they, they talk about gun violence and we know it's a split issue, but it really shouldn't be because kids are dying every day. Um, in Yonkers, we, we, we like to talk about and, and brag about the crime rates going down over the years, but realistically, we still have issues with guns. We do. Look, I talk to, I'm not against guns, I'm against Neither guns. am I, for yeah. the record. For the record. But I think that as a community, we have to take a, a, a serious conversation about it and we have to, you know, clean up the streets. Exactly. I'm not against guns per se, but I'm against uh, guns in the hands of people that shouldn't have guns. In, in New York, we have some of the strongest gun laws, but still, we're finding people with guns that shouldn't have guns. Uh, but you know what? Some people say, well, look, uh, we need more guns. Well, United States of America has more guns than we <laughs> have people. Countries that don't have guns, or much lesser guns, mm -hmm then they have people also have much lesser mass shootings than the United States. Or not at all, right. Or not at all, okay. So go figure, I'm not an expert, I'm just speaking from my personal, my personal opinion. Mm -hmm. Education, mm -hmm. how important Shanae, is education? Uh, how important is to understand that, yes, just a dream is not enough. Mm -hmm. You need to have an education. You need to have a plan of execution in order to achieve your, you know, your goals. I know there is a lot of young ladies out there and young boys out there that look at you and say, that's where I want to be someday right. when right. I grow up. Yeah, no, education is absolutely important. Um, I don't think I would be where I am if I wasn't able, um, provided a very good education from my youth up until now. I'm still learning, right? Um, but I, I think, um, 
I feel really bad for the youth today because of the pandemic and because of the world that they, that they know, or the mass shootings in schools and, and the things that they had to do to prepare against it. I, that's not how any child should be raised. Um, that's not the education that I would want to see them have. But, you know, that's terrible to me. Um, but we know that it's a necessary thing right now. But I think we have to, as a community, provide the education that they're not getting in the schools, right? We know in Yonkers in particular, not every school have their own teams, their own, you know, you know they don't have JV and, 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 and varsity, everything. Like if you go next door to Greenberg, they have, every school has their own basketball team, their own soccer, baseball, so on. Here in Yonkers, we have to do intramurals, we have to combine um, schools and, at, at times, and that's not, that's not fair to the kids, but we know that sports and arts and these things are a big part of educating our kids and it's a big part of their growth. Um, so maybe there's a way for the community to, to, to have those organizations, those after school extra, um, intra, um, extra activities for them to participate in, um, but we have to support, we have to support the parents, we have to support the schools in this way. Um, and I, and I think that's a big part of the education. But don't you think that the parents also need to do their part? Look, yeah. I have spoken to uh, yeah, parents do. Marisol Mancebo from the PAL. You know, Marisol is the new uh, yes. director of the PAL doing a wonderful job. They have lots of programs coming up. What they don't have is many people joining mm -hmm. those programs. But then we talk about we need more programs. Programs are there. The programs are there. We need the community to, to be aware of them. We need. I think we have an issue with marketing in general in Yonkers. Um, for whatever for whatever reason, the the good stuff that's happening never seems to reach the people. They don't promote it. That's why I keep talking to many. So look, it does not matter mm -hmm. how many programs you have in here. Mm -hmm. You need to go out there and promote those programs. Promote, promote, promote. Let the community know. You want programs? Well, we have them. Mm -hmm. Okay, come on in. And you have to be consistent because we know the first time you do something, it's not going to be great and you're not going to the biggest turnout. But if you continue to do it, people will continue to hear about it and it grows from there. Yeah, because we have another great program that is ran by the Yonkers Police Department, Captain Patrick McCormick, right. with the hockey. We have the. the and that's been going on for years. For years. The football by uh, Kit Olsen mm -hmm. and also by the fire department. All we need is people to take interest. We need the parents to inquire. We need the parents to go there. Why WCA? Why MCA? We need parents to join and be active in their PTAs in each school. I think that's something that we really want to bring back. Um, some schools are, have very strong, very active PTAs, but others do not. And I think that's on. Um, you know, the school district to make a bigger push in that regard. Um, but yes, I, I agree with you when you say that we need the parents to be active, but sometimes, you know, we have a lot of younger parents who may not know, right? And so we have to help them. But whatever, whatever our network is, whatever, wherever we are, we have to help spread the information, spread the love, spread the word, and things will change. And promote your programs. Promote, promote, promote. I know you have lots of things to do. I, I've seen that uh, upper watch. <laughs> next time we have, yeah, next time we have an interview, you leave me your upper watch over there. Fair enough. <laughs> now she has work to do for the people. Things that she was elected for, they never stop. You know, this is one of those things. Even though sometimes they might be home, and those calls and texts keep coming in. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's why you know they don't have a tight schedule. So we have to conclude. I have also another interview coming up. Guys, stay tuned for the next one. Mm -hmm. uh, is there anything else, Jeanette, that uh, we should have spoken, that we didn't, that you want to bring it up? No, I think um, I think we, we touched on all the topics. Um, I do want to encourage people to um, come out and, and into the downtown um, every Friday night throughout the summer. We have live music, um, different different. Uh, genres, and I think it's a really good thing to see a lot of our seniors come out, but I want to see young people get engaged as well. Obviously, do what you must if you want to wear your mask or be safe in that way. You can. There's no judgment, but come and, and be a part of the community and all the festivities that's happening. So guys, what's coming up next on Yonkers Works? If we, within the hour, we're going to interview Chev, who's going to talk about nature, quality of life, enjoyment. Next week, we have mental health Mm -hmm. 
you know, which in the Williams, in the two or three weeks after we have Rila Goran live on Yonkers was to talk about the JFK Marina and the plans and how that is going to help the community. Not so much a JFK Marina. She is. She she doesn't have JFK the project. Marina, not JFK the plan correct, project. Correct. Not the JFK. I don't want people to be confused and think that. Yes. Let me even <laughs> back yes. that up. Not JFK Marina about the, ch the changes plant. on the Part plant. Right. That plant is going to benefit us in many ways, and she's going to be talking about what's coming up there. But remember, things are not written in stone. Sometimes things do change because planning or whatever. Right. So that's going to be an interesting interview. She's also the owner of the, the mansion on North Broadway. We had a, a live broadcast from the mansion. From the mansion, a lot of people enjoyed it. We're going to have a second one. So stay tuned on Yonkers Voice. Thank you, Councilwoman. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to support Yonkers Voice. You can do that in many ways. One of the ways is by sending some stars our way, but that's not the only <laughs> way. You can support us by doing what you've been doing. Ask your family and friends to join Yonkers Voice Facebook page. Also, Yonkers Voice YouTube channel. Once in a while, Facebook has technical problems. We cannot broadcast, but when that happens, we jump on uh, YouTube, our YouTube or Instagram. Thank you all. Yonkers Voice is always interested in staying focused on the thing that matters to you, not gossip not nonsense we address the things that we feel are important to you as always we don't endorse or oppose any ca any candidate they all welcome on yonkers voice to speak about the things they've been doing we do this for you so you can engage ask questions as long as you do so in a respectful and polite way thank you for watching until next time now guys give me a second to get off this chair because i don't have my cameraman i have to go give me one second <laughs>